From the Tribune News Network, this is Newsbreak. I'm Krishna Russell. Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis made a strong appeal for all citizens to take the COVID-19 vaccine yesterday, insisting the country's economic rebound hinged on widespread administration of the jab. In a nationally televised address, Dr. Minnis said when a large percentage of Bahamians are vaccinated, more of the country will be able to open up, adding this would spark more jobs among other economic positives. He said vaccinations will likely be a requirement by other countries to travel overseas and that cruise lines may also have the same stipulation. While his address did not reveal specifically when the first vaccinations of 100,000 doses will arrive here in country, the prime minister said the government was expected to receive more details on the shipment today. Some Atlantis workers will return to work for the opening of the Royal on March 11th. According to the resort, those team members must test negative for COVID-19 before returning to work. There is also a requirement to submit to a weekly testing in addition to following health and safety protocols, Atlantis said in a press statement yesterday. With the Royal resuming guest room operations on March 11th, the resort will receive guests there, the Cove and Harbour side. President and Managing Director of Atlantis Paradise Island, Audrey Oswell, said, quote, we are delighted to welcome back additional team members to Atlantis and showcase the newly renovated Royal East Tower guest rooms to our guests. As a result of the comprehensive and effective health and safety protocols at Atlantis, we see even more pent-up demand from our guests to return to the Bahamas, which supported our decision to reopen guest room operations at the Royal. Additionally, Bahamian residents will be offered an exclusive special staycation offer with rates starting at $125 per night and includes a $25 daily resort credit complimentary parking. Early last month, Atlantis placed multiple workers back on temporary furlough due to the unfavorable occupancy forecasts for January 2021. A man was found shot dead in Grand Bahama last night. Police were called to the scene of a shooting in the area of Island Luck, located in Freeport at around 8.30 p.m. Responding officers met a man lying on the ground in a pool of blood in front of the building. Police did not release the victim's identity. However, sources say he is Omar Penn, a.k.a. Punch. Penn had survived shooting incidents before and was wounded in October 2018. A man was later charged with attempted murder in connection with that incident. Penn was also shot in early 2019 but survived that attack. A police spokesperson in Grand Bahama said officers have no information that there will be retaliation after this killing, but added, there is always the possibility of such actions after violent events. This is the first homicide for the year on Grand Bahama and the country's 17th for the year. Bahamas Union of Teachers President Belinda Wilson yesterday said there is still a lack of information regarding the strategy the Ministry of Education plans to employ to ensure that teachers and students are able to work in a safe environment as face-to-face classes resume in several islands. In a statement over the weekend, the Ministry of Education said schools in New Providence, Abaco, Eleuthera and Exuma have been given permission to resume face-to-face instruction on Tuesday using the hybrid or blended model. Education officials also said while several schools will begin in-person instruction on the official launch date. Some institutions will resume physical classes at a later date. Yesterday, Mrs. Wilson told the Tribune that the union is not certain about the health and safety protocols that have been specifically implemented for schools, as the Ministry of Education has just generally said what the Ministry of Health will be doing. She also said 11 schools will not open in New Providence for face-to-face learning because of incomplete school repairs or renovations that have not been addressed yet. She said these factors have impeded teachers and students from getting back into the classroom on their various campuses. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, just one year ago, America had no idea. Life in February 2020 still felt normal. Concern was building about a mystery respiratory illness that had just been named COVID-19. There was panic buying and a sense of trepidation. Yet, it was tempered by a large dose of American optimism. The coronavirus still felt like a foreign problem, even as U.S. authorities recorded the country's first known death from the virus. Precisely one year later, America is charging toward a horrifying milestone of 500,000 deaths from COVID-19. Two UK studies released Monday showed that COVID-19 vaccination programs are contributing to a sharp drop in hospitalizations, boosting hopes that the shots will work as well in the real world as they have in carefully controlled studies. Preliminary results from a study in Scotland found that the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine reduced hospital admissions by up to 85 percent four weeks after the first dose, while the Oxford-AstraZeneca shot cut admissions by up to 94 percent. In England, preliminary data from a 
study of healthcare workers showed that the Pfizer vaccine reduced the risk of catching COVID-19 by 70 percent after one dose, a figure that rose to 85 percent after the second. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A high-pressure system centered northeast of the area will maintain brisk winds across the islands, while a stationary front in the vicinity of the central Bahamas continues to weaken today. Beachgoers should refrain from entering the water due to moderate to rough surf and the high risk of rip currents, mainly at east coast beaches. Small craft operators in the central and southeast Bahamas should remain in or near port. In the northwest Bahamas, it'll be partly to Mostly cloudy, breezy, and a bit warm, with the chance of a few passing showers this afternoon. Mostly fair and cool tonight. A small craft caution is in effect. Winds east to southeast at 15 to 20 knots, but gusty at times over open waters. Seas 4 to 7 feet, but higher in gusts over the ocean. In the central and southeast Bahamas, it'll be variably cloudy, warm, and windy, with a few scattered showers this afternoon. Mostly fair and breezy, with possible stray showers tonight. Small craft operators should remain in port. Winds easterly at 20 to 25 knots over open waters. Seas 6 to 9 feet over the ocean. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 79 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 66. The sun will set this afternoon at 6.06 and will rise tomorrow morning at 6.38. That's news break. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper now on the streets or stay up to date online at Tribune242.com.